Hi everyone and welcome to Transaction Atomicity SQL Training. My name is Ami Levin. You can find out more about me in the links below. SQL transactions are characterized by four desired properties. These are very easy to remember using the ACID acronym which stands for Atomicity, Consistency, Isolation and Durability. In this training, we will focus on the atomicity property. Atomicity in SQL is a property of a transaction that defines how multiple operations, typically data manipulation, also known as DML statements, can only fail or succeed as a single unit of work. For example, in SQL Server, transaction boundaries are defined using the begin transaction and the commit or rollback transaction statements. It is commonly assumed that atomicity guarantees that all the statements within these boundaries are dealt with as a single unit of work, meaning that all statements either succeed or fail together. Other database engines may use different syntax and semantics, but the underlying principles are very similar. For the demo, I will be using SQL Server and a very simple employees table with only the employee name as the primary key and the employee's zip code information. Let's create the employees table and populate the first two employees, Heather and John, as our starting point. Note the check constraint that enforces a zip code to consist of just five numeric characters. Now, let's see how atomicity applies to rollbacks. In this code, we insert our next two employees, Sarah and Kelly, in a single transaction. After both inserts complete, we can see both rows have been added to the table, but after I roll back the transaction, and try to select again, we see that both rows are no longer present in the table, which is what we should expect from an atomic transaction. So far, so good. Now, let's see what happens if we have an error in one of the insert statement, but we still try to commit the transaction for both inserts. Note that in the first insert, I replaced the zero with a character O, a pretty common typing error. As expected, we get a check constraint violation as the O alphabetical character is not permitted for a zip code. Now, if we execute the select star again, what employees would you expect to see in the table? Most developers expect to see only Heather and John, our original two employees, since one of the inserts within our transaction failed. This should have failed the entire transaction, right? Oops! How come Kelly is in, in spite of the error for Sarah? Well, in SQL Server and some other database engines, constraint violations do not roll back the entire transaction. And this is not a bug. It is by design. Other database engines use different semantics and behavior, but atomicity for commit is not always guaranteed, and we should always test our code to make sure it behaves as expected. Let's see what we can do to avoid this phenomenon, but first, let's revert Kelly's rows insert. One way to guarantee atomicity in SQL Server is to set the session option exact abort on. This tells SQL Server that we want to roll back a transaction for any type of error. Now, with this setting, we can see that the entire transaction has indeed been rolled back and we are left only with our original two employees, Heather and John. But the best way to deal with atomicity is not to trust defaults, but to explicitly handle errors in code. In this example, we encapsulate all the insert statements in a try block. For any error that occurs within this block, execution will immediately go to the next catch block. In the catch block, we explicitly tell the engine how we want to handle the error. In this case, 
we throw the error back to the calling stack and roll back the entire transaction. As you can see, this too results in an atomic transaction, leaving us only with Heather and John. To sum things up, we must remember that transaction atomicity is not always what you might expect it to be. Different databases have different rules and behaviors under different circumstances, and we must always carefully test and validate how our code behave in different scenarios. And lastly, remember that our best bet is not to rely on any default behavior, but instead explicitly handle errors in code and guarantee that our application behaves in a consistent and predictable manner. Thank you for your time. Hope to see you in my next training and have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye-bye.